thank you very much. You think that's an easy trip? That's not an easy trip. We came through that cold and everything. Although I must say, 40 below zero in a place called Iowa. That's pretty good. But the result was worth it, wasn't it, huh? And those are great people. And they are. They're just great people. And you're great people. The whole country is loaded up with great people. And they're tired of seeing the failure and the death and the destruction. And we're going to turn it around. Hello, New Hampshire. Hello very much. I love you, New Hampshire. I'm, I'm thrilled to be back in the home of first in the nation. You know who kept you first in the nation, Steve? Huh? It's Trump. But I just want to tell you, first in the nation, you're always going to be first in the nation. You know, there's another party that doesn't want you to be there. And uh, we put you there, and I said I was going to keep you there, and we kept you there. And four days ago, you take a look, we won a record-setting victory in Iowa. Nobody expected that. We said, well, if we got 30 or 35, it would be good, and we get 52, 53. We had a great time, and we had a great time with a lot of friends up there. And uh, we did a lot for the farmers. We did. We gave him 28 billion dollars, farmer from China. Do you think Biden worries about China? Look at my man, my great veteran friend. How are you? Okay. We've been fighting for the veterans ever since I've known you, which is at the beginning from the first day, right? Thank you. Thank you. We did a good job for the vets. He said. And with your vote four days from now, we're going to win another historic victory in the great state of New Hampshire. And then we're going to defeat crooked Joe Biden, the worst president in the history of our country. And we're going to make America great again. So the primer is this Tuesday, January 23rd. So if you want, send a message straight to Crooked Joe and all of his thugs and frauds destroying our country. They are destroying, I mean, what they're doing on the border, what they did with Afghanistan, what, how they could let this happen to Ukraine with Russia. None of this stuff, inflation wouldn't have happened. The attack on Israel wouldn't have happened. None of it would have happened. It's just such a sad, sad thing to see. But you need to get every patriot you know and get them out to vote in record numbers. We got to get record numbers. You know, when I was in Iowa last week, I'd made a lot of different stops and speeches and everything. Every time I there said, just, you know, don't believe the polls because it had us up 40 or 50 points or something. I said, you got to get out because margins are important, not because of the people we're running against. Nikki, I don't even talk about the Sanctus. Whatever happened to him? <laughs> well, no, a poll just came out. The Sanctus is at four. What happened to this guy? One of the great self destructions I think I've ever witnessed, Steve. What is it? And she ain't doing too good either. She's down very low. She's down very low, but we'll finish it off. This could, this could end it. Get the big vote, it ends it. This could end it. We end it. And then we can focus on the worst president. Then we can focus on then we can focus on Biden and his thugs. But any information you need, you get nh.donaldjtrump.com. They give you all the information, so you have to just get out and vote. From the very first day that we take back the White House from Biden and his people, the radical left lunatics, I call them, I believe, and, and they are radical left. Look what, look what I have to go through. Whoever thought I'd run for office and I'd end up being indicted more than Alphonse Capone, okay? Now, whoever thought, they say, oh, he's challenging the election, which I happen to be right about 100%, by the way, and everyone knows that. It was a rigged election. And for challenging an election, they indict you. These are bad people. They indict the political opponent because they have nothing else. They have the worst record probably in history. In fact, you've heard me say this, Jimmy Carter is a happy man today, you know? Because his presidency is brilliant by comparison to Biden. It's a brilliant presidency, congratulations. Now, this is the worst, this is the worst, most dangerous, and he is a threat to democracy for a number of reasons. Number one is he's incompetent, he's a threat to American democracy. He's a Joe Biden, is a, a, a threat. Who would do weaponization? Weaponization is a threat. Using DOJ to win an election is a threat to democracy. 
So I believe we're going to have uh, the four greatest years of the history of the country. I also think that when you look at how bad the economy is in some ways, but the stock market holds up because every time I have good poll numbers, if you take a look, the stock market's going up. The stock market thinks we're going to win. That's the only reason the stock market's up. And if something would happen, I tell you, I, I honestly believe you'd have a crash like in 1929. That's what I believe. The stock market is up for two reasons, actually. They're running on the fumes of what we did. We had the greatest economy ever in the history of this country. And, and they think we're going to win. And if we win, the stock market's going to go through the roof. But they think we're going to win, and I think that's why it's up. But we will quickly cut New Hampshire energy prices in half or even more. So you don't know because you have a governor who's <laughs> honestly, he's terrible. This guy, I watch him. He's all over the place. You know, he ran for president. You know that he didn't announce it because he didn't have the guts. Right. But he ran for president and he didn't exactly his his numbers were in the vicinity of Asa Hutchinson. <laughs> No, they were so bad. And instead of announcing, like you're supposed to do, you're supposed to run, you announce a running. And if you do well, great. If you don't do well, that's fine, too. What are you going to do, right? But he never, he went around. He was on every show. This guy, he thinks he's hot stuff. He's nothing. He's nothing. Now, sometimes, sometimes I say things about people where you can never bring it back. That's okay with me, Chris, because this guy is bad news. This guy is bad news for the country. He, I don't want to bring it back. I never want to have it back. I don't I'll take good care of New Hampshire. I always have. You don't need this guy. This guy is bad. He's bad. He's bad. But he ran for president. He ran for president. He went crazy. He's on every show. I said, the only thing I respected, I didn't know how he could get from one studio to, I've never seen anything like it. And you know what? He ran so much that people realized they don't like him very much. It was crazy. And then he decided not to run. But that's all he was doing. And now he's backing a woman that I know very well, a woman that is not capable of doing this job. I know her very well. She's not tough enough. She's not smart enough. And she wasn't respected enough. She cannot do this job. She's not going to be able to deal with President Xi. She's not going to be able to deal with Putin and Kim Jong-un and all of the people that you, the very fine people you have to deal with. And she will not be able to do the job. And we have to tell her to leave Social Security a lot because she wants to wipe out your Social Security. We're not going to let that happen. So the next Trump economic boom will begin exactly on November 5th, 2024. Right? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. No, I think I think we're going to have, you know, again, in Iowa, we had such a result. And a lot of people said, you know, you can't get more than 40. You can't. And all of a sudden, these numbers came in. In fact, it was a little embarrassing. I had to go at the very beginning, 7 o'clock, right at the beginning. It opens at 7. And I heard the results come out at 10. So I get up and made a little speech to the, in that case, the caucus goers, and I made a speech, a little, nice little speech, lasted for about two minutes, and I walk off the stage, just like 10 after 7, something like that. Sir, congratulations, you've won. I said, <laughs> I've won what? I didn't know what the hell they were talking about. Al, I said, uh, what did I win? And they said, you won the caucus, the Iowa caucus. I said, what time is it? I heard it. I said, those must be very good numbers. And it's interesting, so Ron DeSanctimonious, he was very upset <laughs> because he hadn't gone on to make his speech. So he's getting ready. He's going to speak in 10 minutes to all of his people to get them all geared up. And they say, Donald Trump has won Iowa. <laughs> and he was rightfully a little bit, he was rightfully a little bit upset. It's hard to go up and make an inspirational speech when you know you lost, right? <laughs> I don't know what he did. Did anybody follow what he did after that? But... We're going to bring America together through unprecedented success. That's what happens. Success will bring our country together because our country is a mess right now. And success, <laughs> she said, forget success. You'll bring it together. Who is that? Oh, there. Oh, look. 
Front Row Joe's we have here. It's Front Row Joe. That's so cute. These are great people. They've come to like 190 rallies. And I hear I have the young ladies from North Carolina. Oh, look at them. So they're at about 100. These beautiful women from North Carolina. I, their husbands can't be thrilled. I, they, every time I make a rally, I do a rally. And these aren't even rallies. These are little get-togethers with a lot of people and a lot of people outside that couldn't get in. Would anybody like to give up their spot? No. Well, you're from... Hey, you're from the, hey, you are, you are from a certain part of the world, New Hampshire. There's no way you would give up your spot. Do you know how, how well you fought? I was reading something on the Civil War. They said the people from New Hampshire were very tough fighters. Did you know that? History. The people from New Hampshire were very tough fighters. You won a lot of battles. That was a nasty war. Thank you very much for coming. We appreciate it. That's like 118 times. But I think that, you know, I think the front row Joes have you beat. I think they have you beat. Over four incredible years under my leadership, we built the greatest economy in the history of the world. There was never anything like it with record low unemployment rates for African Americans, Hispanic Americans, Asian Americans, veterans, young people, old people, men, women, everybody. People with diplomas from the great Wharton School of Finance, like me, people People with diplomas that uh, don't have diplomas. People with no high school diploma. Everybody, every single group had the best numbers and the, this country was coming together and nobody believed how it was. We had gasoline prices at $1.87 a gallon when there, there was no inflation. There was no inflation. But now under Biden, the most corrupt president, the worst president. You know, I never used to talk this way about him. I'd joke, I'd find, would, but I never, but once I got indicted, I said, oh, this guy is really a bad guy. So now I say it like it is. He's grossly incompetent. He's the most incompetent president and the most corrupt president we've ever had. Because once they do the indictment stuff, and once they do that, I got indicted four times. Remember, Al Capone, didn't come close to that. That was the one thing. When I fly over a blue state, two days later, I get a subpoena. <laughs> These and we're doing fine. I got a lot of lawyers, and we're doing good. We really are. We're actually doing very well. And it's very interesting. You know, we're leading by a lot. We're leading by numbers that nobody's ever seen. In Iowa, we broke the record by double. And... There is a theory out there. I, I actually believe we would have been leading by a lot, but we wouldn't be leading by this kind of number. Had they left us alone, had they just left us alone, I'd be leading, but not by the kind of numbers that we're seeing where we set a record that nobody's ever, ever thought was even possible. And you know the funny thing? If they would have played straight, they're not. And, and that includes the fake news, because the fake news is terrible. But if, if they would have played straight, just think about this, because I've never said this before. I was just thinking as I'm standing up here, because unlike this other guy, I can think from the stage. He can't. But if they would have... He can't. He can't find his way off the stage. But if they would have played straight, just think of it. I'd now be getting ready to leave government. And now they've got me for four more years. <laughs> look, what, <laughs> look what they've done to them. I just thought of that. So you all can come, you people back there from North Carolina, you can come and watch for another four years of this stuff. Cause I don't. But isn't that, a, isn't that great? I just thinking, you know, we'd be just about wrapping it up, Humpty, saying we had a great, but here's the advantage. We wouldn't have Russia attacking Ukraine. We wouldn't have inflation. We wouldn't have the attack on Israel. Kim Jong-un of North Korea wouldn't be threatening us with the nuclear missiles again. Uh, China wouldn't be even thinking about Taiwan. We would have the greatest economy ever, and we wouldn't have had inflation. Other than that, I'd say it's about even, okay? <laughs> but none of these things would have happened. Inflation was caused by stupid energy policies, and none of this stuff would have happened. So it's really sad, but we're going to do something. And I guess, I guess, and mortgage rates, we, mortgage rates hit an all-time high, and with me, they hit an all-time low. That's pretty, that's a pretty big difference. 
We had the lowest mortgage rates ever recorded. And they have among they have among the worst, right? So you know, no, it's I could go over we could go over plenty more too, if you want to know. And now under Biden, everybody is poorer. The typical family has lost over seven thousand five hundred dollars a year thanks to Crooked Joe's inflation. Inflation is a country buster. It busts up countries. Germany years ago, any country where it has yeah, sit down. In fact, so they see in the back. That's okay. You'll be standing up at about two seconds. It's always nice when you say sit down and then about 12 seconds later, the whole place is standing up. No, that's an honor. I mean, it really is. It's an honor. It's an honor. It's like when I endorse people, they win. Almost 99% they win when we endorse. And I consider that like a great honor. I don't think it's, it's just this whole thing. Make America great again. It's the greatest movement in the history of our country by far. It's just amazing. MAGA. Joe Biden, you're all that MAGA. We got to stop that MAGA, that MAGA. They're bad people. I say, what does MAGA mean? I, I don't know what it means. What exactly? It means make America great again. That's all it means. It's very simple. Very simple to understand that, Joe. Under Trump, everybody was richer. The typical family saw their income grow $6,000 a year plus. We passed the largest tax cuts and regulation cuts in American history. We did regulation cuts that were the largest, but we did tax cuts that were substantially larger. Thank you. We were substantially larger than Ronald Reagan. That's pretty good, right? Substantially, and he did good, but we did even better. And we created over 8,000 opportunity zones. There's a senator named Tim Scott. I don't know, I'd, try, I'd love to get him up here tonight, but I don't know if I'll be able to get him. You know, he's always working in Washington, D.C., but he came to see me, and he had this idea for opportunity zones. And it's bringing in now tens of billions of dollars, no investment. The country doesn't have to do anything. It just gives incentives to people to work in areas that would have been gone right now. And it's one of the most successful economic development uh, situations that we've ever gotten involved in. And Tim Scott is uh, the one that came to see me about it. And I'm, I'm really uh, thrilled to know that he may even be able to, we're going to try and get him. What would I love? Would I love to get him to endorse me, right? You think we could get him? But he's a man of faith and courage and conviction, a man who fought for those opportunity zones like nobody would ever fight and school choice and also taking care of the historically black. And you take a look at this, the colleges and universities, I took care of them. You know, every year, presidents from different black, small colleges, large colleges, they'd come, they'd converge, 50 or 60 people. And I got to see them every couple of years. I'd say, but in like clockwork every year. And I got to know them a little bit. And I said, Fels, let me ask you a question. Why do you keep coming here? He said, because they don't give us the money and we need money. And it wasn't huge amounts compared to what you would think. And they're great people. I got to know them very well. And they were just coming. He said, we, one, one of them said, we feel like beggars having to come back here to Washington to ask for money to keep our colleges going. And other colleges, you know, they have so much. Look at Harvard. Look at some of these guys. They have billions and billions of dollars. Well, that's another one. Did this young lady named Elise, did you see that? Yeah. Young lady named Elise Stefanak. Well, that wasn't that a beautifully, that was such a, that was such a beautiful delivery. Did she destroy those three people? But, but you know, it's, uh, we're going to bring our country back. We're going to bring it back stronger than ever before. But uh, we did all these things. And, uh, but I said to the uh, college presidents, I said, fellas, I'm going to get you long-term financing, and I'm going to get you more than you asked for. And they sort of didn't believe, because they've been doing this for 25, 30 years. Every year they come up and they ask for money for their colleges. And I got them more money than they wanted, more money than they asked for. I sat down with them. I said, you need more money than that. And they're doing a great job. I said, the only thing bad, I got them 10-year financing. They don't have to come back to Washington. I said, the only thing bad about it is I'll probably never see you again. I'll probably never see you again. But I took care of the colleges, where, where, and they take care of incredible numbers of great black students. And it's a, they do a fantastic job. And I was very honored. Nobody ever writes that stuff, so.
I talk about it myself a little bit because I feel I have to. But, but maybe, but maybe that's why we have the best numbers with African Americans, best poll numbers that anybody's seen in many, many decades, right? Many, many decades. They had a poll today, 28%. Now, 28% normally wouldn't sound too good, but when a Mitt Romney, this kind of a character, he is not their kind of guy, I can tell you. But Mitt Romney's at four. 28's very good, right? No, 28 is very good. I'd like to see, I'd like to see a lot higher than that. They shouldn't be going with the Democrats. The Democrats have been terrible to them, frankly. But uh, we're starting to find that out. But we had a fantastic poll. Hispanic, likewise. Hispanic, we're over 50% in a lot of polls. In fact, the Democrats are cratering. Because you take those two numbers, if, if we're at 28 or anywhere near it, and it, we're 50% with Hispanic, and the poll shows we're higher, just cancel the election. Just say Trump wins automatically, because that's a whole. Now they're going to say, see, now when I say that, you know, we have fun, we're laughing and kidding. But when I say that, he's a fascist. He announced tonight he wants to cancel the election. They actually had, you know, when I imitate Biden, he can't find his way off a stage. He can't put two sentences together, right? Can't put two sentences together. He's a teleprompter. He doesn't know where the hell the teleprompter's there. And the nice part about me, I only use the teleprompter. The average, I think they say it averages about 9%. Wouldn't it be nice if you had a guy that didn't really need the teleprompter? Isn't that nice, though? Isn't that nice? But, you know, the, the dangerous thing I have, Al and Steve, is when I joke a little bit. You know, we got to joke. This, the country's in such trouble. If you don't have a sense of humor, we'd never get by. But you got to sort of make a little bit of fun. And uh, I, I sort of uh, imitate his speaking, and I go, bye-bye. <laughs> uh, he has no idea where the hell he is, right? Or I'll, I'll show him where he, he can't find the stairs. Now, we have a stair there, we have a stair there. We have one here, we have one here. They're all over the place. And he can never find this. I think Secret Service does it. You always have this young, handsome guy run onto the stage, grab his arm, and pretend like it's normal to be doing that, right? <laughs> But the biggest thing is, when I do it, they sometimes put me on, and they say Trump couldn't find his way off the stage because they are the most dishonest people on earth, other than guys like Adam Schiff and, you know, Shifty Sh Pencil Neck. Pencil Neck! He's a marvel. No, he's a structural marvel. He has a neck, and his head is like a watermelon, and his neck. And how that neck can hold up that big, oversized, ugly head is hard to believe. <laughs> no, it's true. It's true. The big head. It's like your finger on a basketball. Some of these guys, they spin it. No, no, he's a terrible guy. Think of it. Think of this, Chef. So they make up the Russia, Russia, Russia hoax. It's a, you know, it's, and by this time it was found out, and blah, blah, blah. Everyone knows it's a hoax, a scam. And, you know, it was originally used as a one-day deal to show that Hillary Clinton lost because of Russia, because they were embarrassed, because they weren't supposed to lose, but they lost. And so they made up this idea that, that it was Russia. I said, Russia? What the hell did Russia have to do with it? And I meant that. So... Then it got carried away. It ended up being two and a half years because it got picked up by the fake news. They knew it was a scam. Got picked up by the... But think of it. Adam Schiff made it up, along with Hillary Clinton and some others, DNC, Democrats. And they made up this, this scam. Dangerous scam. Very dangerous. Amazing that, you know, fortunately, I knew Putin very well. And we had a little bit of a, a relationship. God, he couldn't believe. He said, what the hell is going on with your country? They make up this scam, and then he comes out of a room. So he knows it's made up, and he has a news conference with a lot of press, and I'm watching this, and he goes, Donald Trump Jr. will go to prison because of what he did with Russia. Now, talking about my son is going to go to prison because of something they know is a total hoax. It's not like they believed it was maybe true. They knew it was because they made it up. It was a scam. It was written. No, think of it. And he's saying, think of it, you have a son. And I called up my son. I said, are you okay? 
He says, yeah, I don't know anything about Russia. What's going on? He knew nothing about Russia. This guy in the th fourth row right here, he knows more about Russia than my son knew. <laughs> and, but think how bad you have to be as a person to do that. So he's got a scam. They know it's a scam. It's a made-up story to try and justify why she lost, okay? She lost because she had no personality. She lost for a lot of reasons. No, they said she's, well, that too, I would say this. She's evil. That's interesting. But, but what kind of a human being would say, we're going to put somebody in prison because of something that we made up that we know is a phony thing? Bad people, right, Steve? Bad people, you know? They're bad people. But tonight, I'm truly honored to uh, bring a man on stage, and I've known him for a long time, and we just happened to get lucky. I talked about Opportunity Zones. I said, I wonder if we could get him in from Washington. He travels very quickly because he does happen to be with us, and he gave me a tremendous endorsement two days ago, and he's going to say a few words to you, and he's a highly respected gentleman, and he's a wonderful friend. And remember, he's, you know, uh, I'm running against somebody from his state, so it's not, it's not that easy to do. I mean, she is, she is running from the state of South Carolina, which, by the way, where I'm, I'm leading her by over 50 points, so I don't know what the hell kind of a job she did, but in South Carolina. But he's a senator from South Carolina. He's a fantastic man, Tim Scott. This Donald Trump country. Oh yeah. Is it? I can't hear you. I can't hear you. You know. We. We love you. We love you, Thank you. Let me say. We need a president who will close our southern border today. We need Donald Trump. We need a president. We need a president who will unite our country. We need Donald Trump. We need a president who will protect your social security and my mama's social security. We need Donald Trump. We need a president today who will stop the crime and recklessness in the streets. We need a president who will restore law and order. We need Donald Trump. Oh, we need a president who will lower our taxes and not raise our taxes. We need a president like Donald Trump. We need a president who understands the American people are sick and tired of being sick and tired. We need, we need a president our foreign adversaries are afraid of and our allies respect. We need You see, we need a president who doesn't see black or white. We see a, a president who sees Americans as one American family. We need And that's why I came to the very warm state of New Hampshire. to endorse the next president of these United States, President Donald Trump. Thank you, Tim, that's great. 
very, very good man and a very respected man. And I appreciate that he came all the way over. You know, you could just put it out over truth. We got to go with truth. It's the best. But we put it out and uh, just a respected guy and having his endorsement means a lot. We have tremendous numbers of endorsements. They're pouring in right now. But having Tim is very important. So now is the time. And you see that through what was just said for the Republican Party to unify. We have to unify. We have to go after these crazy people that we're dealing with. Instead of wasting hundreds of millions of dollars attacking Trump and others, we need to come together and focus all our energy and resources in defeating crooked Joe Biden, our worst president. So worst president. Sadly, not everyone is willing to put our country first. We have to put America first here in New Hampshire. Nikki Haley has made an unholy alliance with rhinos, never Trumpers, Americans for no prosperity. Did you ever hear of Americans for no prosperity? Globalists and radical left communists to get liberals and Biden supporters to vote for her in the Republican primary, because that's what they do. They questioned me about that today. They said, oh, Democrats don't vote. They already signed up almost 5,000 Democrats to vote. That's your governor's fault. He could have ended that very easily. But he doesn't do the job. Maybe he's got something else in mind. I think he's lazy, actually. You want to know the truth? In Iowa, nearly 50 percent of Haley's voters said they were voting for Biden in November. So the people that voted for her, and think of it, 50 percent said they're going to vote for Biden in November. And now the leftists are spending millions and millions of dollars to flood your airways with Nikki propaganda. It's Nikki propaganda. And she's not doing, she's not going to do the job. I can tell you, I had plenty of experience with her. She's fine. She's okay. She's not bad. But she's not going to do the job. All you need to know about Nikki Haley is that every corrupt and sinister group we've been fighting for the past seven years is on her side. They're all putting up America First Patriots. They're, they're, all, they're all people that are fighting our America First movement and our patriots. And we can't take a chance. Our country is so far behind. We had a great country three years ago. Now we have a country that's in terrible distress like never before. The people behind Nikki Haley are pro-amnesty. They're pro-China. They're pro-open borders. They're pro-war, pro-deep state. And they're actually effectively pro-Biden. He's the only one that doesn't know it, actually, if you want to know it. <laughs> Our movement is pro-borders, pro-jobs, pro-freedom, and pro-America. Pro-America, it's very simple. The radical left Democrats are supporting Nikki Haley for one reason, because she's easy to beat. If you take a look at the poll, she's the easiest one to beat of the whole group. She's the easiest one to beat. And they want her. <laughs> what is that? No, she's, she's a bird brain. That was very interesting. That was very interesting. Thank you very much. Take it easy. Thank you very much. No, honestly, there is. There's a lot of energy in this room. And there is because they, we want to take our country back. We want to make our country great again. But here are some of Nikki Haley and Ron DeSanctimonious's toxic positions that make them totally unelectable. They're unelectable. Nikki Haley said she wants to raise the retirement age to match life expectancy, which means that she wants to work your you're supposed to work your entire life. Every day, I'm going to work my ass off, right? And then you die. That's life expectancy. And so much for Social Security. You know, you, you have the right to it. You paid for it. Likewise, DeSanct has voted three times to raise the age to 70. And, you know, DeSanct is, is a fan, and so is Nikki. Uh, they supported a, a terrible, ri a, really a rhino. He's destroyed... He's hurt Fox very badly. Sadly, he's hurt Fox, but he's also hurt the New York Post. He's hurt the Wall Street Jour Journal. Uh, he's a rhino, Paul Ryan. And, and he had the 2011 plan to destroy Medicare. Remember the same plan that led Democrat ads showing Republicans willing granny off the cliff. Remember granny? That was not a good ad for the Republicans. And he had a chance. He ran and he lost. We ran and we won. We won twice, by the way, in case you have any questions. Yeah. And we did much better the second time. We did much better the second time. And this time we're going to blow it apart. Because I'll tell you what, uh, 
There's more excitement. You know, we did great in 2016. It was shocking to people. It wasn't shocking to me because we'd go to rallies where we'd have 45, 50,000 people all the time. And she'd wheel in and, you know, she couldn't get 10 people in an audience. And I said, you know, why is she favored? There's a lot of bad things going on with these elections. We have to have safe borders and safe and free and fair elections or we're not going to have a country. But... And we have to do it, and we have to do it, and we, by the way, on elections, we have to go paper ballots the same day, and we have to, and we have to have voter identification, voter ID. You, you have to see them. I've been in the room. All right, so let's go. We want to put in voter ID, uh, just as a little point, you know, you're negotiating. All right, we want to get for our elections voter ID. No way we're going to get it. I mean, the whole room goes crazy. Now, there's only one reason for that, because they want to cheat. Because when you have open borders, high taxes, bad education, a woke military, and it's not woke down here, it's only woke with those few people up top that really have no clue. I see they're starting another war. The same people that ran Afghanistan are going to run. We got a Secretary of Defense who's running the war. They say he's laying in a hospital bed. His laptop is on his chest, like a child would do, you know? <laughs> I don't want to say, you know, he doesn't fire. I got accused of firing a lot of people. He doesn't fire anybody. Wouldn't you think that the people that did the Afghanistan disaster were in charge of it, where they moved the military out first, where they gave $85 billion worth of equipment, best equipment anywhere in the world. I bought it. You know, I rebuilt the entire military. I bought it, and they gave it to the Taliban. Do you know that uh, Afghanistan is one of now the top two or three leading sellers of military equipment anywhere in the world? Because they don't need 700,000 rifles. 700,000, Al, rifles and guns. They don't need 70,000 vehicles, many of them armor-plated. Boy, somebody was a good buyer. They, can you imagine? You, we didn't need it either to win. I wiped out ISIS, and we did it rapidly. It was supposed to take five years. I did it in four or five weeks. And we didn't have to get a lot of new equipment. We just wiped out ISIS. But incredibly, Nikki is defending her planned cuts for Social Security and Medicare. She wants to mess around with Social Security and Medicare. You don't deserve it, especially senior citizens. You don't deserve it, and we're not going to let it happen. Perhaps worst of all, Nikki Haley is backed by the deep state and the military-industrial complex. She's never seen a war she doesn't like. She's never seen a war she doesn't like because they know she's a globalist fool. These globalists are fools. You know, we want to help the globe if possible. We got to help ourselves first. Our country is in horrible distress because they know she's a globalist and can be easily manipulated to obtain and send hundreds of billions of dollars to Ukraine. And I want to help Ukraine, too. But here's the problem. Europe, which is approximately our size as an economy, when you add up all the countries, and I got them to play. They're not in love with me. I got them to do things that nobody thought possible, including NATO. Not even talking about NATO, but just a, but including NATO. Uh, we had many countries that weren't paying anything for NATO, and we were footing the bill. I figured that one out in about two, two meetings. By the end of the first meeting, I said, this is a real mess over here. I got them to put up hundreds of billions of dollars into NATO. They weren't paying for years. And I'll never forget, the leader of one of the 28 countries at the time stood up and said, does that mean if we're not paid up, you're not going to protect us? I said, that's exactly what it means. And the following, the following day, billions and billions of dollars came pouring in. But the problem I have with Ukraine is that uh, we put up, and it's a horrible city. Look, the problem I have is it should have never happened. Those cities are demolished, those people, and, and the numbers are much greater than what you're hearing about. You know, when they knock down some of those buildings, those are major buildings, those are shockingly big buildings. That's what I used to do. And when they knock down those buildings, you have a lot of people living in those buildings. And the numbers are going to be far greater when you see the end. Uh, and those cities are being obliterated. Those, those domes, those golden, beautiful, ancient domes and all of the architecture, they're all, it's all obliterated. It should have never happened. Nobody should have been killed. Zero chance Putin would have done it with me there. He wouldn't have done it. I talked to him. I used to talk to him. It was the apple of his eye, but he was never going to do it. Because I told him what we would do to them. 
and he would have never done it. Also, he did it because of oil prices. Biden drove up oil so high that he had so much money. You know, Putin's made a lot of money on this thing because when you get it over $100 a barrel, I had it at $35 and $40 a barrel. At $35 and $40, you survive. At $100, you become rich as hell. Same thing if you look at the current version is Iran. Iran was broke with me. I told China and every other country, if you buy oil from Iran, you're not doing any more business with the United States. It's over. In addition, any business that comes through, we're putting a 100 percent tariff on it. And President Xi said, like I said, I won't be buying oil from I won't be buying oil from Iran. So I saw it, I saw it the other day. It was actually a Democrat congressman on one. I think it was Deface the Nation. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Deface the Nation. <laughs> but they had a uh, Democrat, I think congressman, and he said, whether you like it or not, Trump had them broke. They were broke. They had no money for Hamas. They had no money for Hezbollah or any of the other 28 or 30 uh, Groups of terror, because they are the groups of terror. That's what they do. But they had no money. If you remember back three years ago, they had no money. We would have had a deal had the election not been rigged. We would have had a deal within the first week or two with Iran, and they wouldn't have had a nuclear weapon. Now they're 31 days away from having a nuclear weapon. 31 days away. You think, it, you think, they're, you think they're tough? You think they're tough right now to negotiate with when they have a nuclear weapon? It's a terrible, they're 31 days away. And I ended the Iran nuclear deal, which was ready to expire, and it was a hard, one of the worst deals ever. And you take a look at what's happening. None of this stuff would have happened. None of it. You'd have millions of people living right now that are dead. You'd have cities that would be beautiful, glowing cities, ancient cities, and they're all in rubble. All because of a crooked, rigged election, and we have people afraid to do something. They go and they search. They go and they search for the people that are complaining about the election. They don't search for the people that rigged the election. And we know who they are. We have it all. So we can't let that happen. If you want losing candidates who put America last, look, you get it. You have people that put America last. And Nikki is somebody that puts America last. I used to watch her when we were dealing with different countries like Russia or China. China. And she was sitting there like, what the hell? She didn't, she wasn't, she didn't, I put her in the room, you know. Look, one of the reasons I did, because I happen to love the Lieutenant Governor Henry McMaster, South Carolina, great. I said, by moving her someplace, Henry McMaster becomes governor of South Carolina. And by the way, he's been a fantastic governor. Henry's been a fantastic governor. So I did him a favor. He was with me all the way. I did him a favor, but uh, I did it because he's good and he's been very popular, but put her over there. And like I said, she was okay, but she was not, she is not presidential timber. Now, when I say that, that probably means that she's not going to be chosen as a vice president. You know, you, know, you can go. No, you can go, you can go, and you can say certain things, you know, I don't like them, and blah, 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 and this. But when you say certain things, it sort of takes them out of play, right? I can't say, she's not of the timber to be a vice, and then say, ladies and gentlemen, I'm proud to announce that I've picked. Do you understand? But that's the way it is, okay? Tell it like it is. Tell it like it is, right, Steve? If you want a president who puts America first, you're going to have to vote for Donald J. Trump. That's what it is. Joe Biden and his thugs know that we are the only ones who can stop them. They know it. And that's why they're weaponizing law enforcement, using the DOJ, using the FBI. They're a disgrace. That's a third world country stuff that they're doing. This only takes place in third world countries. Never taken place anywhere near. There's never been anything like this. And they'll go after others, too. And I tell the Republicans, the Republicans are nicer people. That's all. They happen to play nicer. And, you know, normally that's okay. But I tell the Republicans, you guys have to get tougher. You're going to have to get tougher. And by the way, because they came at me before I even won the election, they were coming at me 
with the Russia hoax and all the other hoaxes and scams. They made it up. It was all made up stuff. They're sick. But if you think that Ron DeSanctimonious becomes president or Nikki becomes president, if you think that they become, I'm trying not to use that name because that name's a little rough, I think, but, but if you think that Bird Brain, I mean, Nikki becomes president, <laughs> if you think that they don't go after her, Steve, they go after her so viciously and she would be out of it so fast, she's not going to fight like we fight, we fight. And we have done, look, we, we had four of the greatest, we, that, was one, that was one of the greatest administrations. I heard a reasonably neutral historian what we've accomplished, even right to try, medically, right to try. If you're terminally ill, you want to get a, you know, we have the greatest doctors, scientists, drug companies, a lot of different things that go into it, but uh, we have the greatest doctors in the world here and the most advanced medicines. And if you were terminally ill and they had something that looked like it could work, you couldn't use it. And they've been trying to do this for over 60 years, get the right, and they would say, I, well, if we, if we injure them, they're terminally ill, I'd say. If we injure, we may get sued. So I devised a document. The drug company sued, they took, uh, they signed, because the drug companies didn't want to show bad results. So they were afraid to show bad results. I got them. We said, we're not going to show those results. We're going to put it on a different chart. We got everybody, the insurance company signed. We got the country, so we got everybody. And a person now goes in, signs that they're not going to hold anybody liable. They just want to get better. And we're using these unbelievably sophisticated drugs that won't be approved for four or five years. And thousands of people are being saved. And it turned out to be the opposite. <laughs> Because a lot of these companies didn't want to have bad results where they're working with people that are terminally ill. And it's actually making people that are terminally ill better. But I mean, that's one thing. That's a big deal because they've been trying to get it for so many years. I never understood it why, but it's complicated. A lot of reasons why, but you would think you would get that done very easily, but it, it wasn't. But we did many, many things. But all these people want to do is election interference. They're trying to interfere with the election. They're indicting you so you look bad. But in this case, at least so far, and I hope it continues that way, I get out and I have a big voice and I explain to people what hoaxes they are, what scams they are. And the public basically votes on that. And by like 88 or 89 percent, they said, this is all political stuff. It's a dirty game they play. And they have to understand that works two ways, because when it's the other team's time, they can do the same thing. And we don't want to do the same thing because it's so bad for our country. It's so bad and so dangerous for our country. What they're doing by weaponization and DOJ and FBI, they raided my house, Mar-a-Lago. It's a quiet little place. It's small, quaint. <laughs> no, think of it. They raided my house. President, ex-president of the United States, former president, 45th, think of it, 45th president of the United States, hopefully soon to be 47th. And think of it. And you have guys walking into your house with guns, guns, carrying guns. It's disgusting, honestly. It's also in violation of the Fourth Amendment. But they don't care about Fourth Amendment because they really are a threat to democracy. Joe Biden is a threat. You know, he goes, he, the whole campaign is, Donald Trump is a threat to democracy. No, no. I'm the one that kept our country safe. I'm the one that got us out of all these wars. I'm the one that defeated ISIS. I'm the one that gave us the strongest border in history. And now we have the worst border in history. And with all of it, and everything I just said, with everything I just said, if I weren't running or if I was doing poorly, like almost everyone else is doing poorly, they're all getting killed. Every single one of them went down to two or three. Uh, Ada Hutchison just dropped out. Nobody even knows it. He was down. He was at zero for like a year. And then I thought he was doing well because about three months ago, he actually went up to one. But the following month, he dropped back down. And he had one month where he was zero with an arrow pointing left. That means he's less than zero. And I say, how is that? <laughs> well, that's probably phony votes that weren't counted, you know? But, but uh, if this weren't, if I weren't involved in this, if I were home, boy, look at all the people back there. You got a lot of people. This is supposed to be a quaint little area. 
This is not quaint at all. They're rough people. This is not quaint. Wow. You know, when she comes here, she gets like nine people. And the press never reports the crowds, you know. By the way, they never report the crowd on January 6th. You know, Nikki Haley, Nikki Haley, Nikki Haley. You know, they do you know they destroyed all of the information, all of the evidence, everything deleted and destroyed all of it, all of it because of lots of things like Nikki Haley is in charge of security. We offered her 10,000 people, soldiers, National Guard, so whatever they want. They turned it down. They don't want to talk about that. These are very dishonest people. But when I look over here, I th I'm so honored. They said this is a quaint area, beautiful area of the state, but it's quaint. We got a lot of people in this room. This is an all-time record. But this is only happening, this is only happening because I happen to be leading in the polls. And if I weren't leading in the polls, or if I weren't running none of this, I wouldn't have any indictments. I wouldn't have anything. They'd say, they'd be doing it to somebody else who was in this position because they've developed a sickness. But as an example, the Redfield Wilton poll just came out a couple of hours ago. It's Trump at 72 percent. Well, think of this. Think of this. This is a very... No, but look, look, it's called Redfield One, very respected poll, highly respected poll, highly rated. They rate polls, too. They rate everything. But highly respected. Trump, 72. Haley, 9. De Sanctimonious, 9. So I'm at 72. They're at 9, 9. In Nevada, we are polling at approximately 100 percent. You know why? They all dropped out of the race because they say they can't beat them in Nevada. So they dropped out. They don't want to spend their money there. So that's and by the way, a lot of people don't realize it. That's next week. In other words, we go to South Carolina after Nevada. Nevada comes first. Then we go to South Carolina and South Carolina. Very respected pollster. He's probably here someplace. Tony Fabrizio just came out with a poll a little while ago. Trump at 64 percent, Haley at 25, and Ron DeSantis at 8. And a poll from New Hampshire, and I don't like saying this because you'll say, oh, let's sit home and watch it, Alice. We don't have to go out. The president's going to win. You can't do that. But I'll give you the number anyway, because I only give you good polls. I don't tell you about bad polls, okay? I never do. <laughs> and in New Hampshire, just came out, I'm given a 93% chance of winning. Here. So we're at 93% chance. Nikki Haley is at 7%. Now, this is one I don't understand. And Ron DeSanctimonious is at minus one. Now, what is minus one? Mean? That means he's less than zero. Is that what it means? How, do you, how can you be from North Carolina over there? You all, you great people, this North Carolina, these people are incredible. Uh, how can somebody be minus one? Does anyone know that? Because Ron... <laughs> that means they're really bad. But we're leading in New Hampshire, but uh, we just don't want you to take anything for granted. This is what I spent all last week saying. I sort of don't take it because we want to win by big margins. We don't want to just win. We want to win by big margins. And I think that all of that verbiage, I think it got people to go out and vote instead of sitting home. And, uh, and you know, they had seriously cold weather. They had record setting cold weather when you have 30, 40 degrees below zero. That's, that's even cold for your standards, Steve, right? That's seriously cold. But uh, we're also dominating crooked Joe Biden in the general election. We're up 10 points over Biden in the new Harris poll, while Haley is getting crushed. She's getting crushed. The radical left Democrats rigged the presidential election of 2020, and we're not going to let them rig the — we are not going to let them rig this election. We're not letting them rig the presidential election of 2024, are we? Rigged election. You got to have borders. You got to have borders and you got to have fair elections. Otherwise, you don't have a country. You got to have both. And we had the greatest border in the history of our country. And within a very short period of time, we had things called like 
Remain in Mexico. How's that? Good? You don't have to know too much. Remain in Mexico. And they remained in Mexico. Mexico said, no way. And I said, way. You're going to, they're going to stay right. And we got everything we wanted. People said, there's no way you can negotiate with Mexico. They're tough. They're good negotiators. But I was able to get everything we wanted. And quickly, you know how I got it, too. And I have a very good relationship, by the way, with the president of Mexico. But he sent a representative over. I said, listen, I want a couple of things. I want 28,000 soldiers immediately free of charge to protect our border. He goes, we're not going to Are you — we're not giving you 28,000 — yes, you are. Oh, 100 percent, 100 percent. He goes, we're not giving you 28,000 soldiers, sir. This is a nice guy, handsome guy, tall, beautiful-looking guy. He comes in, we're not going to give that to you, sir. He was a representative of the president, who, who's terrific, by the way. But I said, no, no, you're going to give it to us. A hundred percent, you're going to give it to us. No, we're not. Okay, you're giving it to us. And he looked at me like, what the hell's going on? This is the weirdest thing I've ever done. <laughs> then I said, we also want to have remain in Mexico. In other words, everybody coming up is going to stay in Mexico. They're not coming in. They didn't. No, sir, we're not going to do that. We can't handle that. You got to see Tijuana, by the way. Well, now it's empty because of this guy. He let everybody come in. <laughs> you had to see Tijuana three years ago, right, Al? I mean, there were more people than any place probably on Earth. And they were all over there because we wouldn't let anybody in unless we vetted them carefully. And we had the best policy on drugs. We had the lowest drug numbers coming in. Now, you're never going to solve the drug problem until you go with the death penalty. But, I, you know, I hate to say that. I hate to say that. No, it's true. It's true. I say it. I don't know if this country is ready for it. Remember this. Every drug dealer, on average, kills 500 people during their lifetime. Every drug. And you have, for whatever reason, I think your governor sucks, you know? You have — I do. I do. I really do. I think he's terrible. But, but listen, you have, for whatever reason, I believe the worst drug po problem per capita anywhere in the United States. I don't know what it is. Whenever I come here and I meet with your fire department, I meet with your police department, they are so unbelievable, the job they do. But they spend most of their time helping people that have overdosed. And some pretty good stuff they — oh, they do a great job. I'll tell you, your firemen, your policemen do an unbelievable job. For whatever reason — and we're going to give police and fire but — and fire, too, by the way. But we're going to give police and fire. But we're going to give our policemen total immunity. If they stop a crime, they're not going to be arrested and destroyed and their house taken away and their family taken away. We're going to give total immunity, and we're going to stop crime in this country. We're going to stop — you know, I have a building at 40 Wall Street. It's a great building, skyscraper, and I have a uh, tenant — a big drug chain is on the bottom of it. And I was there the other day giving a news conference on a fake trial that I'm in. You know, I have all these fake trials. But I'm using the lobby because it's right near the courthouse. Beautiful lobby, beautiful — and I said, what happened to that tenant? Sir, they couldn't survive. Now, we're talking about Wall Street, right up — right opposite the New York Stock Exchange. You don't get a better location. A drug chain, big one. You know the name. I won't give it, but you know the name. They're all sort of, like, big. And I said, what happened? They said, sir, people walk into the store. They walk into the store with bags, and they just go like this in the shelves. They put — we couldn't keep anything in stock. They just robbed us blind. Then I looked at the store, and they were, you know, going to have to move out. I looked at the store, and they have glass all over the place with locks on everything. They have chains wrapped around. I said, you can't run a business like this. He said, sir, it's a phenomenon that we've never seen before. They walk into the store, and they just take whatever they want, and they walk out. And we're helpless to do anything. We're going to change all of this. This country, we're going to change it. And I lost a good tenant, so I'm not too happy. No, but it's all over the city and all over the country, actually. No, it's not here. It's not here. And it wasn't in Des Moines, and it wasn't in certain places. But I can tell you, uh, your major cities run by Democrats, you can't — where they walk into a department store and they walk out with televisions, and the cops aren't allowed to do anything. The police are told, don't do anything. Oh, you could stop it in one day. If you met one or two of those incidents with serious force and let everyone know that that's a serious force, it would stop in 24 hours, okay? Every time the radical left Democrats, Marxists, communists, and fascists indict me, 
I consider it a great badge of honor because I'm being indicted for you and never forget. Our enemies want to take away my freedom because I will never let them take away your freedom. Yeah. They want to silence me because I will never let them silence you. And in the end, they're not after me. They're after you. And I just happen to be standing in their way, and I will always be standing in the way. So we're delighted to be joined tonight by some tremendous people. And I just want to call them out because they've been here from the beginning. They've endorsed me, and uh, they've just been great friends of mine. You know, we have a lot of friends in your state. State representatives, Lily Walsh. Well, Lily, where is Lily? Lily, thank you very much, Lily. What a great, thank you. It's such a great honor. Appreciate it. Tim McHugh, Tim. Thank you, Tim. Appreciate it. And Clayton Wood. Clayton, thank you very much, wherever you may be. Thank you. Thank you, Clayton. Merrimack County Commissioner David Loveline Jr. Thank you, David. Beautiful. And two people, okay, they've been special to me, uh, friends of mine. Uh, I'll give you the real Elise Stefanek Lee Zeldin. But, and I want them to come up, but they've been special, two special people. They're really brilliant people. Lee, against all odds, came within a few points of winning the governorship of New York. He is so smart. He's such an incredible lawyer, and he almost did it. In the end, they just came down, and a lot of bad things happened. But I'll tell you what, one of the best campaigns that anybody's seen. He almost did it. And today it would happen because it's gone so bad because today they have 350,000 people living there that weren't there then. They're living in the middle of the streets and it's a horrible scene. And Elise became very famous because she took on the heads of MIT and Penn and Harvard and did it in a surgical way. Wasn't it beautiful? And, you know, she was a great student. I think she went to Harvard. She was a great student at Harvard. And she's brilliant, and Lee's brilliant. Lee's a brilliant lawyer. And uh, they traveled a long way to be here. If you don't mind, I'd just like to have them come up and be acknowledged, all right? Elise and Lee Zeldin. to be here and I'm proud to be the first member of Congress to endorse President Trump for re-election. And I'm excited to bring up my friend and our amazing, amazing former congressman and our amazing candidate for governor in New York State, Lee Zeldin. Is New Hampshire ready to put President Trump back in the White House? Yeah. We have a country to save. And when we vote for President Trump, we are voting to secure our border. When we vote for President Trump, we are voting for an economy that would be stronger than ever. We are voting for a foreign policy that is more effective. We are voting for parental rights and a higher quality education inside of our schools. When we vote for President Trump, we are doing it for our veterans, our military, our law enforcement, our firefighters. We do it for our flag, our freedom, and our future. We are doing it. We're voting for President Trump to make America great again. Let's get it done on Tuesday. Let's get it done in November. God bless all of you, and thank you for supporting this great president. That was pretty good, huh? On day one of my new administration, I will seal the border. I will shut down the invasion of millions and millions of people who are pouring into our country. Three years ago, we had the most secure border in U.S. history. We built 561 miles of border wall. 
And with the help of Mexico, we did a job that nobody's ever done before. We had it done. You know, Biden goes to the beach a lot because he's got consultants that say, you look great in a bathing suit. You ever see him in the beach? He's going into the... No, you look great in a bathing suit. Some consultant is getting paid probably give him a million bucks a year, and he says, we want to see him on the beach. First of all, I don't want to see a guy that much on the beach because it means he's not working, right? But I don't think he's particularly like... Actually, he's heavier than I thought. I thought he was razor thin. It's only his legs that are razor thin. But you know, they have a consultant. He said, this guy looks so good, he's so handsome that he's going to be on the beach as much as we If he would have gone to the beach, and the problem is, you know those chairs? They're like light aluminum now, right? A child can lift them. They're meant for a child to lift for your grandfather, right? A child. He can't lift a chair. Remember, he used to say, I'd like to take him to the back of the bar. And the press, the fake news said, oh, isn't it so cute? If I ever said that, they'd say, he's a fascist. You know what would happen if he took me to the back of the bar? He'd be in trouble. But you know how I go like this? <laughs> Under Biden, the USA has been turned into a dumping ground of the world. So we have a couple of... Does anyone want to hear the snake? Do you know the snake? Should I do it? So this is a... I just happen to have a copy with me. Uh, this is a was a song, actually, a long time ago. And I sort of changed it around a little bit. I just, it just reminded me of our border and what's happening. And I do this because, uh, and people think it's good, and, but most people that are smart say, boy, that's a problem, because this is what's happening to our country at the border. On her way to work one morning, down the path along the lake, a tender-hearted woman saw a poor, half-frozen snake. His pretty colored skin had been all frosted with the dew. Poor thing, she cried, I'll take you in and I'll take care of you. Have you heard this before? And how much do you love it, right? Take me in, O oh tender woman, take me in for heaven's sake. Take me in, O oh tender woman, cried the vicious snake. She wrapped him up all cozy in a comforter of silk and laid him by her fireside with some honey and some milk. She hurried home from work that night, and soon as she arrived, she found the pretty snake she'd taken in, had survived. Take me in, O oh tender woman, take me in for heaven's sake. Take me in, O oh tender woman, cried the vicious snake. She clutched him to her bosom. You're so beautiful, she cried. But if I hadn't brought you in by now, you truly would have died. She stroked his pretty skin again and kissed and held him tight. But instead of saying, thank you, ma'am, the snake gave her a vicious bite. Take me in, O oh tender woman. Take me in for heaven's sake. Take me in, O oh tender woman, sighed the vicious snake. I saved you, cried the woman, and you've bitten me, but why? You know your bite is poisonous, and now I'm going to die. Shut up, silly woman, said the reptile with a grin. You knew damn well I was a snake before you took me in. Thank you. So... When we're taking in, when we're taking in people from prisons all over the world, when we're taking in people from mental institutions and insane asylums from all over the world, if you take a look at the population of mental institutions all over the world, you see it's way down. Some are empty because it's all being dropped and deposited and dumped right into the United States. How stupid are we? And that is a very accurate portrayal of what's happening, but what's going to happen. There's a 100% chance of terror in our country. This isn't like, oh, gee, you know, I fought like hell with the terror ban. I got it approved, ultimately, by the Supreme Court of the United States. I didn't want to have people come in from countries that like blowing each other up. 
And we had no terror for four years. We didn't have one incident. We didn't have any. And I could never talk about it. Even during the election, I couldn't talk about it because I didn't want to do that. And the following day, something happens. I didn't want to even give people ideas. We had no terror. None. We defeated ISIS. We had no terror. Nobody's ever done the job that we've done. But, you know, that is just emblematic. We are taking in people from jails and prisons. You know, there is a slight difference in those words from from mental institutions and insane asylums. We're taking in terrorists at numbers that are massive. They're massive. We're taking in massive numbers of people. We have no idea where they come from. We don't vet them. We have no security. They just pour into our country. It's 100 percent certain that terrible things are going to happen. And we have no chance. Like Dwight Eisenhower, he was a big deportation president because they were having a problem. By the way, nothing like this. No country's ever had a problem like this. There's never been a problem like this. Nothing like this. But he deported, you know, hundreds of thousands of people that came into our country illegally. And so we're going to, unfortunately, have to have a mass deportation because no country can withstand this. No country. No country can withstand this. So upon taking office, I will terminate every open borders policy of the Biden administration and begin the largest deportation operation in America. We, we have no choice. I don't want to do that. You know, I don't want to do that, but we have no choice. It's not sustainable. It's, a, it's not affordable. We owe, we owe $36 trillion. It's not affordable, but it's not sustainable as a country. You see where they're coming in and uh, in New York, they're actually taking over the schools. They're, they're literally taking the seats of kids that have been growing up in a school. And those kids are being sent to secondary schools out of in bad locations. And in, in people are sitting in the classrooms that don't speak a word of English and nobody knows what to do about it. It's not sustainable. And we're going to take people back to where they came from. And we have no choice but to do it. And it's going to be it's so it's so sad because no matter whether you're a super genius or not a super genius, when you take millions and millions of people and I believe the number is going to end up being 16 million people by the time this ends, the real number, you know, they give you oh, three million, four million, it's a lot of people. But I believe the real number is going to be 15, 16. That's larger than New York State. And they just flow in. There's nobody to even check. There's nobody to do anything. Uh, the drug lords, uh, the uh, the drug lords, thank you, darling. The drug lords and the people that do this, the human traffickers are, I, I, I believe they're among the richest people in the world. They have, we used to fight them. And they were tough, by the way, but you used to fight them. And Brandon Judd of the Border Patrol, he's fantastic. And the whole group is, the, these people are fantastic. They want to fight. They want to stop it. They're told you can't do anything. Just let everybody pour in. They are fantastic people. They're patriots. ICE, they, they, the way we treat these incredible patriots is so sad. But ICE, they would come in for me and they'd fight MS-13, one of the most vicious gangs, probably the most vicious gang in the world, and they'd go in and they'd just start swinging. I mean, it was incredible. Nobody's going to do it. I have friends in the front row. Those guys, they're tough guys, but they're not tough for that. They don't want any part of it. These guys are tough, and they they love our country. That's a rough job, and we don't give them the backing that we should. We're going to give our police backing. We're going to give them backing like they'd ever had, because we have to straighten out this mess. To stop the deadly drugs that are poisoning our people, I will deploy the U.S. Navy to impose a full fentanyl blockade on the waters of our region. I had meetings with President Xi. He was going to give the death penalty to anybody sending fentanyl into the United States, and he was all set to do it. And then we had a rigged election. He was all set, and then nobody obviously followed up. The drug cartels are waging war in America, and we will destroy those cartels. They're going to be destroyed. And I will use Title 42, as we did for four years, to end the child trafficking crisis by returning all trafficked children to their families in their home countries, and we'll do that immediately. And the beautiful thing about the law enforcement, we have great people in law enforcement, local. I mean, local and federal, state. 
But they know all the people. They know all the criminals. They know the good ones, the bad ones. They know everybody. They know them all. They're cops on the beat in some cases, or they're just in the neighborhood. And we'll be working with them because they know everyone. They know who they are, when they came. They know everything about them. They're just not allowed to do anything about it because if they do, they're going to lose their job, their house, their family. They're going to lose everything. Nikki Haley will never secure the border or stop the fentanyl that is killing thousands of New Hampshire citizens. She never spoke to anybody, and she kept saying, did you speak to the people about fentanyl in your meeting? Which, well, we didn't mention it yet. Oh, great. But I spoke directly to President Xi a lot. And he was going to give them, you know, uh, they have the death penalty in China for drug deal. They have no drug problem at all. They make drugs for us. Okay, that's what their problem is. That's our problem more because I think I think the real I think the real number is three hundred thousand. That's a three hundred thousand deaths, destruction of families. When you lose a child, when something like this happens, the family can never ever recover from that. They can never ever be the same. And we're losing hundreds of thousands of people. They like to say 90 and 100. I've been hearing that number for so many years. But we're losing 300,000 and more than that. And uh, China can't do this to us. And I told them, I said, you can't do this. And we have a lot of power over China, a lot of power, a lot of economic power, even though we're losing that, you know, gradually because we're so stupid. We let them have so much. Nobody ever did. I took in hundreds of billions of dollars in tariffs. No other president took in 10 cents. Never took in 10 cents. 28 billion to the farmers and fishermen, by the way. Haley opposed my border wall. She fought like hell against the border wall later on. I said, what the hell are you doing? You know, one thing I learned a long time ago, you know, you have a computer, it's obsolete in about three weeks. You buy a new phone. Seven months later, they come out with another one. The old one was no good. Everything is like, you know, just they replace it. The two things that they never replaced over thousands of years, what are they? The wheel and the wall. They'll never be obsolete. The wall and a wheel. Everything else is obsolete after about two minutes. But she condemned my strong border policies. And in 2016, she stabbed the Republican Party in the back by siding with Barack Hussein Obama against the Trump travel ban, which was one of the best things. I'm telling you, it kept our, that kept our country safe. This is far more than a campaign. This is the greatest political movement in the history of our country. What we are a part of, there's never been anything like this. You know, guys like Pat Buchanan, who was a great guy, but he'd go in and... Oh, listen to that. Yeah. But he'd go in and he came in, I think, second in New Hampshire, long time ago. And he ended up with a great political career because of it, you know, as a pundit. He was a great guy. But here we are. We win every state. And then we won the election. And then we did much better the second time. You know, the second time we got millions and millions of more votes. Somebody said, how did you do? Do you know the second time, and this is them, not me, the second time, it's recorded as the most votes ever gotten in the history of our country by a sitting president. And then they say we lost by a whisker. Uh, it's so sad, isn't it? Huh? But we're going we're gonna to make up for it and then some. Together we ended the NAFTA disaster, the worst trade deal ever made, and we replaced it with the brand new USMCA, the best trade deal ever made. That's the best trade deal we've ever made in our country. And in fact, Mexico and Canada are trying to renegotiate that deal with Biden. And I just say, if you're listening, Joe, don't do it. Because they took advantage of us for many, many decades with that horrible NAFTA deal. But USMCA, best trade deal. Everyone acknowledges it. I did that one very personally. It was very personal. I took on communist China like no administration in history, bringing in hundreds and hundreds of billions of dollars poured right into our treasury right into our treasury. You know, they would take so much money out. That's how they built their military. They built their military. Their military could be comparable to ours. Nobody really knows, but it could be comparable to ours. They took it out of our country. And then I gave so much, but I also gave not only to the farmers. We have New England lobstermen that, were, that are being horribly treated by this administration. They want them to go out now and get licenses and pay $700 a day. I don't know much about fishing. I do love it. I love what they do, and they're brave people. Boy, that's rough stuff when those waves get up, you know, three times higher than your boat, and you're out there, and your family's waiting. Are you still going to be okay? I mean, this is tough. And then you have to pay these fees. That's going to be ended day one. 
day one. And I'll fight for the fishermen like never before. And I did that for four years, and you had no problems for four years. I even got rid of that ridiculous 500-mile thing, right? You had to go out forever to catch a fish. They had 500 square miles or something. It was all landmarked out that you couldn't do anything. You couldn't fish there. I said, what the hell did you do? We'd have to travel for days to get — it's the most incredible thing. I ended it. And then uh, — didn't have much help from Susan Collins, I can tell you that. But in Maine, in Maine, I made that industry. You know, we won that half of Maine. We won something that you're not supposed to be able to do, and I won because of what we did. But I'll put all that stuff right back. They ended it, and uh, the pipeline they ended. We had the Keystone Pipeline. That was done. Everybody was working. The head of the union endorsed Biden. He endorsed Biden. And like one weekend, they ended the Keystone Pipeline, 48,000 jobs that I got approved. Uh, but we'll get it all started up again very quickly. And it caused so much problem, so much problem. Before I even arrive at the Oval Office, shortly after we, we win the presidency, I will have the horrible war between Russia and Ukraine settled. I will get it settled. I know Putin. I know Zelensky very well. I know them both. And we're going to get it settled. It's got to get settled. It's, uh, it's a bloodbath over there right now. We will restore peace through strength. And by the way, Europe has to pay. They have to equalize with us. We're into Ukraine for $200 billion, and Europe's in there for about $20 billion. And it affects them much more than it affects us. We have an ocean in between. They don't. And we have to equalize. They have to put up an equal amount of money to us. And even there, we're being generous. But we're in for so much. They come in and they give them billions and billions of dollars. It's like, how the hell do you do a thing like this? Europe is going to have to put up a lot of money fast. And we have to equalize. Does everybody understand what that means? Because we have very similar economies. If you add up all of their countries, it's about the same size. I'm the only candidate who can make this promise. I will prevent World War III, 100 percent, 100 percent. Because we have never — we have never been in more danger from weapons of mass destruction. We have never been in more danger of World War III than we are right now. We have a man who has no idea what the hell he's doing. And we are in serious danger because of it. I rebuilt the military, and we're in pretty good shape in that way. But I'll tell you what, we have uh, — we have people that don't know what the hell they're doing. So sad like taking our soldiers out first in Afghanistan. You take the soldiers out last. Wouldn't you say, Steve? Steve is not a big military guy, but you would say, take the soldiers out when everything, when the equipment's out, when the people's out, right? It's common sense, right? We are the party of common sense. They say, you're quite conservative. I say, no, I'm not conservative. I'm, I'm a person with a lot of common sense. We need a strong border. We need great elections. We need great education. We want a nice house at a low interest rate. We want a strong military. We want law and order. We want to protect our police. This is like, this is common sense. You could say the whole thing in a minute. And it's about common sense. And we're the party of common sense. At least as long as I'm here, we're the party of common sense. And we will build. An iron dome over our country as a state-of-the-art missile defense shield. And it's all going to be made in the USA. And you know who had that idea? Ronald Reagan, many years ago. I remember listening. I said, this is a great idea. The problem was when he had it, there was no real technology for it. Today, those things are amazing. You see how it knocks them out in Israel. I've been — we're doing other countries. We're helping other countries. We're building iron domes in other countries, but we're not doing it in our country. We are going to build the greatest Iron Dome anywhere in the world to protect our country. And they work. All made in the USA, by the way. All made in the USA. I will also defend our great veterans, and I will ask Congress immediately to build. And I said, we're going to get it. We'll have it very quickly. It's already been more or less approved. We almost had it done until we were interrupted. We will build a full-service VA hospital in New Hampshire right now for your veterans, and they deserve it. You're the only state that doesn't have it. You know that? You're the only state that doesn't have that.
You are the only state that doesn't have a full service VA hospital. I will direct a completely overhauled DOJ to investigate every radical, out of control prosecutor in America for their illegal, racist in reverse enforcement of the law. How about Fannie Willis? How about Fannie Willis? They indicted many, many people. Oh, she wanted to indict many more. She wanted to indict U.S. senators. All they wanted to do is make sure the election was legit, which it wasn't. And then she's uh, Robin Leach, Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous, starring Fannie Willis. Now think of this, how sad is that whole thing? And so many people have been hurt. They've indicted people that are fine people that didn't even know what they're talking about. These are vicious, vicious people. And hopefully that thing now ends because that's a really, a, forget about me. There were many, many people indicted. She wanted to, she had a list like 56 people. And all they're doing is they want a fair election. They don't want cheating on the election. It's a disgrace. And now you see this stuff come out and how bad is that paying a guy almost a million dollars who had zero experience, but it's her boyfriend. And then they traveled all over the world. Norwegian Cruise Lines. Oh, isn't that nice? I'd like to do that. I just don't have time. <laughs> We're going to rebuild our cities into beacons of hope, safety, and beauty better than they ever have been before. So it affects you a little bit less, but we have to save our cities. New York, Chicago, Los Angeles, Boston, Boston. We have to, we have to rebuild our cities and we have to watch the crime and we're going to take down the crime and we will do something else that's, to me, very important. We're going to take over the horribly run capital of our nation in Washington, D.C. We're going to clean it up, renovate it. We're going to build and rebuild our capital city so that it's no longer a nightmare of murder and crime. Two nights ago, three people were shot. Three people, they come to our city and they come to our capital and then they get shot. They're shot every day. They're being shot. We're going to hit them so hard. We're going to hit them with Law enforcement so hard, they'll never be doing it again. Remember when they got very rambunctious with ripping down our statues? Yes. And I passed a law, quickly signed a law, that if you are seen anywhere near, if you're touching a statue, doing anything negative to any of our monuments, you get 10 years in jail, no probation, no anything. And it immediately stopped. It immediately stopped. But we have to save our capital. People can't go there anymore. Can you imagine you're a foreign dignitary, you hear about the United States and you drive and you're driving over garbage. I was there on one of these fake lawsuits about a month ago and we're driving down the road and I always used to say, get that road clean, do this, do that. The medians are broken. The medians are falling down. The medians meaning the, that crap steel that they use all over the place, the stuff, it looks like if the sun hits it, it melts almost, right? Do you ever see that? It's always in bad shape, but that's falling in. The uh, roads were in horrible shape. The curbs were all broken and busted. And we're riding over garbage, garbage cans that are sitting there for six months. You know, you can tell garbage how long it's been there just by looking at it if you're smart. And this is stuff that hasn't been swept up in months. And I say, could you imagine if you're in from major countries all over the world, or minor countries, and this is the United States Capitol, and you're driving over garbage, and there's graffiti and swastikas on columns that are magnificent columns that are bigger than this stage in width, and there, and, and this is what we're stuck with. Now, we have to clean up our country. We have to be proud of our country again. We can't have a capital where everybody is being shot. Oh, you have to hear the stories. People don't, they leave the trunks of their cars open so that when they steal the tires, you can take the tire. Just please don't break my trunk. And, and that's like one of the more friendly stories, what they're doing. They're invading people's houses. Our capital is a crime-ridden mess. And we're going to take it over because they run it so horribly. And we're going to run it by the federal government, which it should be run by. And we're going to get rid of the slums really fast. And we're going to get rid of all those tents that are all over those beautiful parks. And we're going to make that capital so safe, you're going to be dying to go there. It's very important, I think. We'll make it the most beautiful capital in the world. On day one, I will sign a new executive order to cut federal funding for any school pushing critical race theory, transgender insanity, and other inappropriate racial, sexual, or political content onto the lives of our children.
Thank you. And I will not give one penny to any school that has a vaccine mandate or mask mandate. And it's hard to believe I have to say this, but I do, because it's not even believable. I will keep men out of women's sports. Who would think this? Who, who even, who thought of that one? I will fully uphold the Second Amendment like I did. Nobody upheld it better than me, and you want to know, it is under siege. The Second Amendment is under siege. I will never allow a central bank digital currency where they take away your money. And we will protect innocent life, and we will restore free speech. So we have a lot of goals. As an example, we will secure our elections. Our goal will be one day voting, paper ballots, voter ID, as I said. But until then, Republicans, you have to go, we have to win. We have to win. You have to get out. Even though we're going to win, we got to win by a big margin so they know we're coming in November, because at November election, we're going to take our country back. That's what we're taking it back. Because the fact is, if you took the 10 worst presidents in the history of the United States and added them up, they would not have done near the destruction or damage to our country as Joe Biden and the Biden administration have done. You could take the 10 worst presidents and add them up. There's nothing even close. When you look at the border, when you look at all of the destruction that's been caused to our country. So if you want to save America, then this Tuesday, January 23rd, you must go out and vote for Trump. That's me. That's me. <laughs> Thank you. And as I said, the details, just in case, nh.donaldjtrump.com. So get up and just go vote and grab your friend's vote. The margin is very important. We're going to win this thing. But the margin, if we, like when we won in Iowa, it set such a, it set such a signal that we won over, substantially over 50 percent. Nobody could believe it. It sets a signal out there because they have to know we're coming. We're taking back our country in November, and they have to know. So we want to win by big numbers. We don't want to just win. We want to win by big, big numbers. So everybody has to go. From Manchester to Meredith. From Plymouth to Portsmouth, from Conway to Concord, you inherit the legacy of red-blooded New Hampshire patriots. That's what you are. Who live by a very, very immortal motto. Do you know what that is? Live free or die. We stand on the shoulders of American heroes who crossed the oceans, settled the continent, tamed the wilderness, laid down the railroads, raised up the skyscrapers, won two world wars, defeated fascism and communism, and made America the single greatest nation in the history of the world. But now we are a nation in decline. We are a failing nation. We are a nation that has lost its confidence, willpower, and strength. It's very sad to see. We are a nation that has, frankly, lost its way. But we are not going to allow this horror to continue. Three years ago, we were a great nation, and we will soon be a great nation again. It was hardworking patriots like you who built this country, and it is hardworking patriots like you who are going to save our country. You're going to save our country. We will fight for America like no one has ever fought before. 2024 is our final battle. It's our final battle. With you at my side, we will demolish the deep state. We will expel the warmongers from our government. We will drive out the globalists. We will cast out the communists, Marxists, and fascists. We will throw off the sick political class that hates our country. We will rout the news media, the fake news. We can't stand the fake news. And we will evict crooked Joe Biden from the White House. 
the worst president in history by far. And we're going to have an election day in 2024 that you will be so proud of. We're going to make our country so powerful, so great, so strong, so safe. The great silent majority is rising like never before. And under our leadership, the forgotten man and woman will be forgotten no longer. They weren't forgotten for four years. We are one movement, one people, one family, and one glorious nation under God. And together we will make America powerful again. We will make America wealthy again. We will make America strong again. We will make America proud again. We will make America safe again. And we will make America great again. Thank you very much, New Hampshire. Thank you. Go out and vote. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you.